On today's episode of Furniture Friday, we're headed into the shop. We're gonna be painting a $30 bench that we picked up at the thrift store last week. We're gonna be spraying it, and the new color is one of the Cottage Colors new releases, not yet out yet. Super excited to show you. All right, we are at the barn today. Recognize the mess. This is the piece we're gonna be working on. You saw it last week. It was from the thrift store and I think I paid... This is not a mess. This is a very efficient called, I'm always in a hurry. I gotta see all my stuff all the time. Seb doesn't want anybody to know he actually has a mess. Um, I paid $30 for this and we're gonna be using the new DIY cottage color. So what do you have there, Zeb? I have the new color, one of the new colors. There's three of them coming out. And we are going to spray it. So this is crockery. We matched it to our number 15 crock at home. It's not yet released. We will have that date soon, but we are going to show you how pretty it is. I think it's gonna look really great with dark wax on this piece. So you probably should strain it, but we're not doing that. Ain't nobody got time to strain. <laughs> we're just pouring it straight in. And this is the sample jar looking thing. That's not, it's so unofficial that it's not even an official jar. We're just pouring it in this there. This is we're our gonna, tester. Our tester jar. So I've got a few adjustments here. This adjusts the pattern of your spray, like mist or fine or like a spray can. Uh, this is going to be vertical versus horizontal direction. This is your paint flow. The more paint you want out, the wider you open it up, less paint, close it down. And this is your airflow adjuster. So if you're getting way too much air, even if you've got it at like 65, 70 PSI on your regulator, you can adjust your airflow to be just perfect what you want. So there's a little breathe valve right here at the top. Keep this clean. It's going to get paint in it. You want it to be able to breathe. If you can't breathe, it's going to create a vacuum. Won't let your paint down. That's our air compressor in there. And what PSI do we have it at? So I got a 20 gallon compressor. It's actually a little on the small side. About 30 gallons plus is optimum at home. I use a 60 gallon. Uh, we keep about 65 to 70 PSI. DIY paint, we spray a little higher. It's a matte paint, so it doesn't really matter about the sheen, you just wanna get it off. The cottage color is about ready to spray, but you just wanna add a little bit of water. So I would say six parts paint, maybe one part water, maybe even less. Play with it, depending on your humidity and elevation and temperature, you're gonna to have to find the right formula for you, but pretty close to one part water to six parts paint. I would say that was about four tablespoons water to one pint of the cottage coloring. That's about right, one sixth. <laughs> it's fuzzy math. I'm just gonna do a little test spray to see how my flow is. This is a brand new gun, I haven't used it before, it's not set up. Looking pretty good, coming out good. Cottage Color is all natural single step paint. No need to sand or prime. Just make sure your surface is clean and if it's not super shiny, you can go ahead and paint. It also has a built-in sealer, which is really nice because as soon as we're done painting this, we'll be able to distress it and it will be done. Zeb, you want to give them some pointers on how to clean your gun? Yeah, about once a month, if I'm using them a lot, I'll take them all the way apart and clean them out. But mostly, I just run a lot of water through them, rinse them off right after I use it, and then I'm going to put a whole thing of water in here, spray it through the gun with just straight water, and that cleans most of your inside parts up pretty good. You can do that a couple times. But for the most part, just straight up water, no chemicals, it'll clean it up real good. So I just got the nozzle right in where the water goes in the inlet and I'm spraying it straight through. Don't even need any air pressure. You're, you're like a pro. <laughs> or I've done it too much and I'm lazy and I don't like to take my gun apart. Now that the gun is cleaned out, we're gonna be using cottage color in white linen. This color is available on jamierayvintage.com. We're gonna be painting it on this cute little table that I got for $10, as well as the baskets that go in our piece. One of the main reasons that I wanted to spray this piece was because I hate brushing wicker. Spraying wicker is like so simple and covers so much better than brushing. So 
Zeph has 220 sandpaper and he's just gonna lightly hit the edges to distress it and bring back some of that dark base color. 220 is the perfect grit of sandpaper for a light distressing. It doesn't ever really gouge it. The white little table we painted earlier is dry and ready to go into the shop. All right, so this is going, I, I didn't measure, so hopefully it fits in here. Where do you want it to go? Right here in the mirror? Um, I don't know, like right, I don't know, let's see. Yeah, that, the that is the perfect spot, because you got the hook up there. Okay. You can set stuff down on there, and you still have room to change. All right. Next up, we're getting some fabric from the shop to upholster the bench seat. So we've brought it back home to cover it because I have all my tools here. And Zeb is just removing the existing fabric. We're going to try to save the backer because we'll put that back on. Oily cloth? Is that what it's called? Oily cloth, oily yeah. Cloth. Not oily cloth. Oily, oily cloth. <laughs> it's coming off. And then we'll get the new fabric on. Pro tip to save your hands. Just cut the fabric off. Done. Now that Zeb has the old fabric removed, I'm going to use our grain sack fabric we carry a ton at the shop. So I went with a 12 stripe blue fabric and I'm just using my Milwaukee nailer. You can use an air compressed nailer or just an old fashioned hand one. The M12 system is nice because it's lightweight. Off the excess fabric. And I'll probably, we have just this little remnant left. I'll just sell that inexpensively at the shop if somebody needs some for a small project. It's my favorite time, dark wax time. I'm just gonna come in here, not gonna go crazy, just a real light, tasteful wax. Then before that gets too much time to set up, wipe it back. Also not going crazy with the wipe back, just real light, just to give it some age. It's got lots of detail here. Gonna hit all these nooks and crannies just light around the edges. And since the cottage color has a built-in sealer, this wipes right back. I don't have to seal it first with clear wax. I can just go straight to waxing. Gives it a little hit of age, but not crazy on this. I just want a little bit. Let's pop this seat on here. Good, drop some baskets in. Oh, get them straight. There we have it. Now we gotta figure out where Jamie wants it to live here in the shop. All right, guys, thanks for watching this video. I'm gonna include close-ups and pictures at the end so that way you can see those exactly what it looks like. We do not have this color out yet, but as soon as it gets out, we'll let you know. Yeah, it was a dream to spray. The sealer, the self-sealer that's in there is amazing. I went right to waxing. It hasn't you set up. You have some wax on your face. I might, I just got done doing it. Um, but the nice thing about it is it's gonna continue to cure up and get hard and it's a really durable finish that one coat pretty much and we were done. So I was like, I gotta start spraying again. If you guys wanna buy the paint and products used here today, visit jamierayvintage.com. And if you like this video, be sure to share it out, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY.